If you've been following my channel, you may have noticed that I haven't been as prolific this last year as I was before. It's not because I lost interest, it's because I was finishing nursing school. Which, if I can borrow a phrase, is like learning to ride a unicycle. But the unicycle's on fire. And the ground is on fire. And you're on fire because it's hell. Seriously, it's awful. If you or anyone you know is interested in nursing school, Run, Morris, run! But I graduated, and I'm now a full-fledged RN, so there's that. When I first got accepted to nursing school, I was really excited to get this new phase of my life started, and I was anxious to go out and buy uniforms and equipment, but I didn't have any good idea of what to buy, and I ended up wasting quite a bit of money on crap that I either had to replace during school or just suffer through. Since I know quite a bit more now than I did at the start, I wanted to talk today to new or prospective nursing students about what I originally bought compared to what I actually finished nursing school with, and answer the question, what do I really need to buy for nursing school? Uniforms are going to vary widely from school to school. In fact, some schools have their own proprietary uniforms that you buy directly from them, so there's no real guesswork involved. Other schools only have a color scheme for their uniforms, and sometimes not even that. So you're left to your own devices to buy your own scrubs, and let me tell you, there is a huge range as far as options, quality, and functionality. For example, my school's uniform was just white scrub tops and hunter green scrub pants, which we were allowed to buy from anywhere. You may have uniform stores in your area that have a wide selection of scrubs. This area has a few small stores, but their selection was really limited, especially for men, and their prices were a little too high for me. Now, because I'm cheap, I resorted to Walmart and I got the cheapest pair of green scrub pants I could find. I think they were $5. And then went online and got the cheapest white scrub tops I could find. I don't remember how much they cost. I think it was like $10. Well, I quickly abandoned the Walmart scrub pants because I discovered that they have no pockets. So this is my first piece of advice when shopping for a uniform. Get scrub pants with pockets. Lots of pockets. All the pockets. You will need them. Put your hands between your buttocks. That's nature's pocket. Uh Gross. I wouldn't recommend that, especially in a hospital. In addition to your wallet, keys, phone, etc., you're also going to be carrying around pens, scissors, stethoscope, blood pressure cuff, and god knows what else on your clinical days, so you need pockets. So then I did what any good nursing student should do, and I started paying closer attention to the scrubs that the nurses at our clinical facilities were wearing. I noticed a lot of them were wearing Cherokee brand scrubs, so I looked them up online, I found that they weren't terribly expensive, they had a wide range of sizes, they had the right color, they had options for men and women, and they had front pockets, back pockets, and side pockets. So I ordered a pair according to the size chart that they had online, but they turned out to be way too big and baggy. I felt like a clown in them. Okay, we'll start off with the baggy... Those are supposed to be baggy pants! Baggy! <laughs> no, they're really not. So make sure that you're buying the right size, and make sure you're buying ones that you can return if they don't fit. Maybe just buy a couple of different sizes up front and keep the ones that fit. Just return the rest. Now one of my classmates had bought a pair of supposedly unisex scrub pants that were way too large for her, but looked like they might be about my size. So rather than return them, she very graciously gave them to me. Thanks again, Jocelyn. They were closer to my size, but definitely designed more for women and not for men, so they never really fit quite right. So that's my second piece of advice, is to buy scrub pants that fit your body type. Although I liked all the pockets in the second and third pair of pants, one thing I disliked about all three pairs of pants I had tried up to that point was that they only had a drawstring waist, which never stayed up, especially once all those many pockets were full. 
So I tried one more time, I ordered yet another pair of scrub pants, and finally, after all that trial and error, I finally found a pair that works for me. These are Cherokee brand scrub pants, which have the regular button and zipper fly. They fit like regular pants, they stay up all day, they got pockets all over. So long story short, I really recommend just getting a good pair like this right off the bat. I would have saved so much money in the long run if I had just invested in a good pair right from the beginning instead of wasting my time with all that cheap crap. Learn from my mistakes. Scrub tops are pretty much just scrub tops. Although, like the pants, many of them are designed more for the female figure than for the male, so if you don't fit into that particular mold, make sure to include the term unisex in your search. White scrubs are surprisingly hard to find, and again, I just kind of went with the cheapest option, only to discover later that they didn't have enough pockets. Now, most scrub brands will have a breast pocket like this, but many will also have little waist pockets down towards the bottom, which these do not, and I really wish I'd had those. I never bothered replacing my scrub tops in school, but if I had to do it over again, I would definitely look for ones with more pockets. Always get more pockets. I don't have a lot to say on the subject of stethoscopes, probably because it's the one thing I didn't skimp on in the beginning. There are cheap stethoscopes out there, but I actually splurged on a decent one. Uh, this is a Littmann Lightweight 2 model uh, with the diaphragm and the bell. You probably won't use the bell very much in nursing school unless you're going into pediatrics or cardiology, uh, but it's better to have it than not. It is noticeably lighter than other models, and if you do end up wearing your stethoscope around your neck, which is not recommended by the way, but everyone does it. That weight difference is pretty significant after a 12-hour shift. I paid about $60 for it, but it is a good model by a well-known brand, and I've never had cause to regret it. I wish I could say the same thing about my blood pressure cuff. By the way, the blood pressure cuff is called a sphygmomanometer. <laughs> Thank you. Didn't they teach you that in medical school? This is the one I bought during first semester, which cost about $17. Now one of the things I disliked about it right off the bat was it's not like the kind you normally see where it opens up completely and seals with Velcro. It's already kind of a closed loop that has this little metal cinch and the patient has to stick their arm through it. Now some nurses prefer this kind, but I find that it just causes more confusion than it's worth, because a lot of people aren't used to seeing them. One thing I don't like about pretty much all manual blood pressure cuffs is that you need one hand to hold the stethoscope, which only leaves you one hand to inflate the bulb and release the little valve. Now these little valves are extremely difficult to open smoothly and slowly with just a thumb and index finger. It takes a lot of practice, and even still, some people just never have the manual dexterity required to do it well. This guy! <laughs> I always struggle at first just to get it open at all, and then I end up opening it too quickly and I miss that first Karatkov sound. But I stuck with it all the way through fourth semester until I finally got sick of it, and I did a little more research online and I discovered that these exist. This is a trigger style release valve with the gauge attached right to the bulb and oh my god has this made my life so much easier. Now they're not cheap. I actually went with the cheapest option I could find online, and it still set me back $80 as compared to $17, but it is totally worth it to me. Now I guess it's still a good idea to get used to using the other style, because you will undoubtedly encounter those during your practice, but seriously, I love this thing. I can actually get a BP in record time now and not look like a fumbling moron. Ah, way to go, Fumbles! Say. Did everyone hear that? It's Dr. Fumbles. <laughs> Apparently, not many nursing students, nursing instructors, or even experienced nurses know that this style exists. So since you may not hear it from anyone else, take it from me. Look for a trigger-style blood pressure cuff and just pay the money now. A clipboard is kind of an optional purchase, but it's one that I think will make your life quite a bit easier. You will need to take notes during clinical, and while some people are content to just carry around note cards or folded pieces of paper around in their pocket, I like having a firm surface to write on because my handwriting is atrocious enough as it is. 
This is a folding clipboard specifically for nurses, and it actually fits right in the side pocket of scrub pants that have side pockets. Plus it has all these little nifty cheat sheets all over it. To be honest, I don't really use these as often as I thought I would, but it's nice that they're there. I'll take all the help I can get. They'll probably, t hopefully, tell you this before your first clinical, but when you're looking for a pen light, don't get the LED kinds. Uh, that's gonna be kinda hard now because it seems like most of the pen lights now are LED because they're longer lasting and they're cheaper, but they're also blindingly bright. The old style have the small incandescent bulb, which is just as effective, but not nearly as uncomfortable for your patients. So when you're looking for a pen light, look for one of these. I recommend getting a pair of scissors like this. Uh, these have the spade tip for going under bandages without cutting the patient. I got these at the campus bookstore and I've seen them at medical supply stores and even at pharmacies. I don't have any real advice to give you, I just got the most convenient pair and they worked just fine. Uh, but I, in the hospitals I have seen nurses who have like giant pairs with the big ergonomic handles that fold up so they fit in your pocket. And those might be a good idea if you're going into like wound care or something where you're going to be cutting through copious amounts of bandaging every shift. But just to get you through nursing school, something simple like this should work just fine. This is just kind of a quick aside and also a piece of general advice. In addition to a reliable pen, always keep a sharpie and a dry erase marker with you at all times. You'll probably have to mark a dressing, an IV bag, or some other form of medication container at some point, and Sharpies are the tool of choice for that. Most hospitals and other settings where you'll do your clinicals use whiteboards for taking notes and charting vital signs and such, but they never have enough markers. So if you carry your own with you, you'll never waste a bunch of time searching for one, and you'll look like a hero. My refrain throughout this video has been, just spend the money up front rather than buy cheap and replace it later. Of course, now I'm going to turn that advice on its head by telling you that it may not be the best strategy when it comes to your textbooks. What? I agree, that sounds like counterintuitive advice, but allow me to explain. I'm sure it'll vary from school to school depending on your curriculum, but at my school, the campus bookstore sold a huge bundle of textbooks supposedly containing all of the books we would need over the four semesters for over $800. Now in previous college courses, I never paid full price for textbooks. I was always looking to score deals on used textbooks from various websites, and I usually did pretty well. But after all the hoops I had to jump through just to get into nursing school, I didn't have the patience for it because it was a huge number of textbooks I was gonna have to search for. So I sucked it up and I bought the bundle. Huge mistake. Some of the books we didn't use at all. Some we only used for one semester, and some that we needed weren't included in the bundle, which required me to go back to the bookstore and pay even more money for those. Don't get me wrong, some of those books are excellent resources that you'd want to keep throughout your career, but even those are going to become obsolete and need to be replaced every couple of years. And some of those books were a complete waste of money that I never even opened. So don't get suckered like me, do the legwork, ask around if you can to see which books you actually need for each semester, and then try and find them used wherever you can, or even consider renting them from the bookstore or from an online service. Okay, that's my whole spiel on nursing school equipment. For all you nursing students out there, good luck, I'm pulling for you. I hope you found this information useful, or at least that you found it so boring that it put you to sleep, because it's probably the last good sleep you're going to get until you graduate. I wish I could say I was joking, but I don't envy you right now. As always, the like and subscribe buttons are down there somewhere, or you can always leave a comment if you have your own recommendations. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. They don't. Any chance you will be done anytime soon? No. Why? Because he started crying and I just made a sandwich and it's gonna get all soggy, but I got it.
We gotta wait for the garbage truck. Interruptions, dog, garbage truck. I haven't done a video in forever. Now you see why. Hmm.